What's up divas and what's up devos? It's your girl April and of course you know what time it is. It is Wednesday which means it is Real Talk Wednesday time. So this is where we dish out the dirt or help people with the relationships or give the advice that they need by me running my big mouth and by you guys leaving a comment below. So yes, Real Talk Wednesday. So we're going to get into this in a couple of minutes. If you guys are wondering about this fantabulous hair that I am rocking, let me tell you girls this. This hair, I created this wig, toned it, streaked it, highlighted it, whatever you want to call it. Um, back in, mm, I want to say, April of 2013. So this hair is super old. It was um, given to me by a company called simplyvirginhair.com. And unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago, I did look on their website, or I looked for their website, and it's nowhere to be found. So I'm not really sure if they went out of business, but I've done quite a few reviews for them amongst other ladies here on YT. And they have, like, the best hair ever. Um, and I always recommended them to like loads of my own clients for buying hair. I have them posted up on my wig site um, for one of the best places to buy hair. And unfortunately, um, they're not, their website is not coming up in the search engine or the link isn't working as well. But I've had this hair for some time and it's the Brazilian, um, I think it's Brazilian um, straight. It is. It's Brazilian straight and it's about four and a half bundles and a closure and I love it I've highlighted it and I've had to tone it twice in the two years that I've had it and the reason for that is because I've worn it so many times and I've washed it you know toner does not last in your hair so if you put toner in your hair um, eventually over time after about probably like so many and so many washes it will return back to that natural brassy look so I recently retoned it a few months ago when I was doing some other hair and it came back to its original color which I love because it did get that orangey color after like several washes several, like many many washes I, I wore this wig for like six months straight without changing my wig only to do videos but this wig was my favorite go to wig and I absolutely love it um, unfortunately the dome cap that I created on it's old so it lose, it's, it's lost some of its elastic stretch so I've had to take in the wig quite a few times probably about three times but I love this hair it doesn't tangle it doesn't shed it does not give me any problem and it's just gorgeous like super long and I think this was the best highlighting job I've ever done and it was actually done with a cap but this was like one of the best highlighting jobs that I've ever done with the cap so kudos to that so if you guys are wondering what am I drinking today this is one of my favorite pineapple upside down cake drink which is Smirnoff cake vodka and pineapple juice and some grenadine syrup um, the, the red flavored one um, and of course I love it in this big cup by Krispy Kreme because I can get more for my buck mm -hmm. let's get into this real talk because I'm trying to get as many as possible done so if you want a real talk about your situation you can always send me an email at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com please make sure to put in the subject line real talk and if you want to change the name of yourself or your character that you are discussing in this email you can go ahead and do so and just let me know that in email so that way I don't have to think too hard so on that note as always you can check the info bar for my wig site for whatever videos I posted below for you guys. And let's get into this real talk. I'm not really sure if she changed her name, but I'm going to call her Rainy. So Rainy says, hello April, I want to say first thank you for reading this and next I would like to say that I've been watching you for years and I love you and your truth. I come to you today about a situation that I am in. My name is Rainy and I have been in a relationship for the past 20 years with three kids together. I have one child before him and he has two before me. After getting together there was some cheating in the beginning from he and I. Then later we began to have our children in starting in 1997. Then after things began to turn in a way that I can't even believe I stayed, we started this breaking up every other year type thing. 
One time I helped him get a job with me, which he totally disrespected me and cheated and left me for another girl at the job place that I helped him get, who had five kids already of her own. I couldn't take it anymore, and then after two months, I quit the job. Then after that, we got back together, stupid of me. After that situation, we got back together. Then while pregnant with my second child with him, we broke up again, and he was with a new girl that he went to high school with, and within a week, they were engaged. That was a horrible time for me. After that, we got back together. I know you want to shoot me by now. I became pregnant with our third baby, and by this time, there were so many other things I was finding out about him. He was always gone with his friends and things like that, and I would stay at home because I was pregnant and had the kids. So, okay, whatever. Some years had passed, and this man now has really dug big. He ended up leaving me and our kids for a younger female. She was 18, and he was 33 at the time. He impregnated her and then later we went back and forth with being together and not being together he then left again after I found out he and her were on the under planning on moving in together then they made another baby again at that time of being together he was still coming by my house which one time he did and I was there with another man now here it is, we still live together. I am totally turned I'm totally turned off by him. I don't love him the way I used to, and I just don't feel like I did back in the day. I want to leave this man alone. However, I don't know how to do this. We do not have sex. We do not sleep in the same bed. He has become an alcoholic. He has lost his mother and brother within two years, and they've died within two months of each other. I just need some real talk, real girl talk. Even if you feel like you don't want to do this on your channel, if you could please email me back, I would appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, let's take a drink for this right here. So, my girl Rainy has been with someone for 20 years. And they have three children together. They have been break, they break up and they make up. They break up and they make up. When they break up, her husband or boyfriend, it's probably her baby father, her boyfriend... He always seems to find someone else to spend time with when they're broken up. So he's had one girlfriend, then he's had another that he's rekindled um, an old flame with back in high school, and they was engaged within a week. And Rainy and her boyfriend, we're going to call him Fred, Rainy and Fred got back together. So I guess the engagement on Fred's part didn't work out with the ex from high school. Then Fred left Rainy again and their three kids for someone much younger than him 18 years old and he's 33 and they moved in together and he's got two babies by this young chick however rainy also found him a job at her job place and he started fucking around on her with the girl from the job and rainy ended up quitting her job so they still live together but he's kind of like a back and forth type negro and she don't love him no more and she don't want him no more they don't sleep in the same bed and they don't have sex what should she do i'm gonna tell you like this first of all if you want to leave me for somebody at my motherfucking job place boy you must be out your rabbit ass mind and bitch you about to get your ass kicked after work like it's three o'clock and the school bell done wrong okay i'm pretty sure your co-worker knew that was your man and still was sly enough and thought enough to go off and sly and fuck your man like that that's total disrespect on both of their parts that right there is an embarrassment at work and i'm sorry but i could not not after that that's just like you know what they're saying is the can't the straw that broke the camel's back that would have been the straw that broke my back, for real. It's one thing to cheat on somebody and you not know about it and then you find out when it's long gone and you hurt and eventually you may or you may not forgive the person. It's up to you and I'm not judging anybody if they forgive their man for cheating because we've all been through some bullshit in our lives with relationships. So I'm pretty sure that none of y'all motherfuckers out there have been in a relationship where it's been golden from the gate and this is the only relationship you've been in. Um... Yeah, so let's be real with ourselves. However, 
in this case 20 years, 15 years, however many years we've been together, if you are to be so disrespectful to me and fuck some bitch at my job, then you really are the epitome of disrespect. And there is no words for you. That's an embarrassment. You at the workplace. This is where you work. You conduct business. This is your professional life. And here you are. I got you. You sorry motherfucker. I got you a job. Because you couldn't get yourself one, obviously. So you had to lean on me, a female, who got you a job. And then you want to go ahead and fuck the bitch at the job place. Where we work together. Like, what type of shit is that? And the bitch who was right along with him. You know what? I wouldn't have quit. I would have gotten fired from the job place because on some real shit, I would have slapped the living shit out of that bitch. Because some people say, oh, you can't blame her because she didn't know. You, she didn't know. Let me tell you something. This is a scenario when I'm 100% sure that the co-worker knew about Rainy and Fred's relationship. However, she still was a nasty bitch and decided to mess with her co-worker's man. There's no way on God's green earth did that co-worker not know that Rainy and Fred were together. So regardless of what Fred might have whispered in this bitch ear, like, oh, we not together, or oh, we broken up, bitch, you still know that's my man and we still work together. Have some decency, have a little bit of respect for your damn self as to not fuck with somebody's man or leftovers at the workplace. There's just some things that you just don't do, and fucking somebody at my job that I got you a job and we're in a relationship is one thing that you don't do. So that's one thing that I would have just been done over with. Like, you know what? Sayonara. Goodbye. Poof. Bitch. Goodbye. Bye, Felicia. Bye. Okay? So that's where you went wrong, Rainy, by fucking taking him back. For one, the first thing you went wrong with is finding him a job. Let me tell you something. He's a grown-ass man. Let him find his own fucking job. You never want to work with your man, okay? I don't give a shit how much money y'all bring it home you do not want to work with your man your boo your girlfriend whatever there is a time and place for relationships and i go to work to get the fuck away from you and have a peace of mind not for you to be at the next cubicle typing away checking on me sliding me notes let's go to lunch meet me at the bathroom let's go get a drink of water can you talk man listen i'm at work i don't really want to be bothered with you i'll see you when i get home or what have you but i do not want to work with you so people please do not get your spouse a fucking job with you because that is the number one mistake you guys are both not going to have a job and it's going to be a hectic place to work never have your spouse work with you unless you guys own a business together but don't give them a job or get them a job with you because your private life will not be so private once they bring their fucking ass to your job place. So that was number one. Number two is where you screwed up is, first of all, you let that bitch get the fuck away. I'm just sorry. Or you let him get away. You let him get away with it because you got back with him and you had more babies with him. That's the number one. I don't really care about the baby situation because babies are a blessing. It happens. However... You can't keep giving a nigga chances because the more chances you give them, the more shit they're going to do. Yeah, they tell you, oh, we're going to stop doing this. Oh, I'm going to not do this. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, please, please, Negro, please. Your ass is not as sorry. You're not fucking sorry. you sorry for the time fucking being, and then tomorrow you'll be at your shit again. Trust me, I know this. The same shit. You ever notice when... You in a predicament with a man. Y'all having an altercation. He done fucked up. So he brown nosing you for the past, for the next couple of days. Brown nosing you. Brown nosing you. Because he know you fucked up. So he want to get back in your good graces. He want to get on your good side. So he brown nosing the hell out of you. You know what I'm saying? And then about a week later, they back to their old dumb shit. Now, I've realized this a lot with my ex-husband. He used to fuck up a whole lot. And it mainly had to do with his drinking and just fucking up money. Just dumb shit like that. But he would fuck up so much that he would brown nose so much. Like, I didn't know if I should get a fucking baby wipe and wipe the brown off of his fucking nose. Because he was so fucking brown nosing. And I hate that shit. Like, don't try to be cool with me now. And don't try to be on my good graces or good side because I don't have one. Okay? You fucked up. You fucked up. So, Rainy, you should have never let his ass back in. Then here's the thing. You guys got back together, got pregnant again, and he left you for somebody else. Again, a high school chick that he used to go to high school with. Excuse me. He used to go to high school with her. And these two motherfuckers got engaged after being with each other for a week. So you've been with him all these years, and he ain't fucking engaged you? 
Man, please, there's something wrong with the picture. Meaning, he does not have any respect for you. He don't really give a fuck about you. You are nothing but a fucking crutch to this man. You lay down, you have his babies, and then you are a crutch for him. He knows that when times get rough and the going gets bad or the bad gets worse and he ain't got nothing to do, nowhere to go, he knows I can always count on Rainy because she's going to take me back and let me back in and she's always going to forgive me. Okay. So now, that's the freaking second time you told me about in the email. Okay, so you had another baby. Alright, like I said, babies are a blessing, but stupidity is not, okay? Bla babies are a blessing, but stupidity is not a fucking blessing. It's a goddamn disease. It seems like there's a lot of people out there that have gotten the stupidity disease, and it's so sad to say that. Now, here's the next scenario. Rainy, your 33-year-old baby father slash boyfriend slash whatever the fuck you want to call him he has left you once again for some 18-year-old bitch. And he's 33. What is he? Some fucking pedophile? Like, some people will say, oh, they're of the legal age. However, she's 18. You're 33. In my eyes, my peripheral, I feel like you are still a pedophile. Because if you are 33 years old and this girl, this girl is 18, there is something fucking wrong with you. That you need to mess with an 18-year-old girl. Oh, I get it. Here's the reason why he's messed with the 18-year-old girl. Because he can't get a real woman because he's a fucking funky, a fuck-up, and an asshole. And a real woman doesn't want to deal with him. So, he preys on the young girl who he can shape and mold. And she can get under his control and he can do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Because he's done that. He's done it to you and he's done it to her. He's went ahead and he's moved in with this little young bitch. And got her pregnant. Not once, but twice. And you, Rainy, have taken him back because he's living in your house. However, you guys aren't even sleeping in the same bed. He's just living in your house and you guys don't have sex. You probably barely speak. He doesn't sleep in your bed. You can't stand him. You probably wish he was fucking not breathing right now. Because me personally, I wish the motherfucker wasn't breathing right now. And I don't even know him like that. But from his actions... I wish that he would stop fucking breathing like <gasps> take your last breath take your last fucking breath nigga cuz this is this is the end for you today okay that's how I'm feeling however he's got this fucking young chick pregnant and they live together but then he's back and forth at your house let me tell you something you don't know what to fucking do and you don't love him no more bitch open your goddamn eyes what the fuck do you think you need to do he's cheated on you he's got babies he had babies on you okay he fucking made babies on you with some young chick who don't know no better. And um, they moved in together. And here he is. He comes and goes at his own leisure in your home. How's that make you look? How's that working out for you, Rainy? Now, like I said, we all done dumbed out sometimes. I'm going to be the first to admit that I'm fucking dumbed out more than once in my lifetime over some fucking men. Okay? Enough times. I've dumbed the fuck out. All right? But you know what? After a while, your ass smartened the hell up and you realize, you know what? You is not even worth my time. And I'm going to say it like that. You is not even worth my time. Okay? I would rather be by myself than be miserable with some sorry ass motherfucker. And that's just my thing. Though I'm not by myself, I have a man. We live together. And we sometimes clash, you know what I'm saying? And there's some days when I just be like, I don't feel like being bothered. Because I'm a moody person. I'm a very moody person. person and sometimes I'm antisocial. However, we clash sometimes. And I feel like this, if you gonna stress me the fuck out, then you don't need to be around me, you don't need to be here. And that's just my thing. I'm not about to let no man ever, 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 ever again stress me the fuck out in life. I'll just be done with him and just go on. Like my bestie says, she always says, April, you, your attitude is like a boy because you will toss him and throw him out in a heartbeat and you know what that is me and i'm sorry to say that but i've been through enough bullshit in my life where i'm not allowed about to let anybody i don't care if it's male or female bring me down knock down my spirits and my self-respect for myself and fucking take me out of my zone for real i'm not about to so here is my fucking answer to you rainy you need to wake the hell up 
and leave that sorry ass man alone. You got three kids with him? That's nice, cool. Raise your kids because if you don't leave him alone, your kids are going to watch all of this bullshit go on and on and on in your life. And they're gonna think it's okay to either be with a man like that or treat women like that. Either way, it's going to reflect on your kids. And you don't want that for your children. You are a woman, you are a mother, you are an adult. Set an example for your children and let them know that this is not a healthy relationship. This is not what you settle for in life. Nobody deserves to settle for anything like that. If he wants to have relationships outside of you, fine, let him. Because he's outside of you, you guys are not together. Leave him the fuck alone. If you don't want to be around him and you can't stand the sight of him, because trust me, I know that feeling. I've been there with my ex and I could not stand him. Ugh. I would hate when he would come home from work. I would just think like, oh, you're still breathing? God, I hate you. That's how I would feel. Like, I literally freaking hated him to death. And I don't like to feel like that about anybody in life. Like, to where I hate them. But some people just bring you there and they've done so much to you. And it's not even their fault that they've done so much to you. It's partially, partially your fault because you've allowed them to do this. So I take blame for a lot of the ways that he's treated me and the things that he's done to me. Because if I would have left a long time ago instead of trying to stick it out and work it out and be there for the kids and stuff. Then I wouldn't have had to go on and endure all of this bullshit. However, so it was partially my fault. And I dealt with the bullshit with him. So, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. However, I'm not going to stick around for the bullshit anymore. So, I left it the fuck alone. When you leave the bullshit alone, your life is a whole lot better, smoother, and easier. So, Rainy, take it from me and get you and your kids away from him and out of that environment. Trust me, once you are away from him and out of his presence, your life is going to be like... A melting pot like seriously when I left my ex and moved all the way to Arizona I was like smooth sailing I wouldn't have gave a fuck if I didn't have nothing in this house when I moved in I was so happy to have gotten out of the relationship it was a blessing and I was just so happy and relieved and I could breathe and I didn't have to walk around with an attitude because that attitude that I walked around with reflected on my kids and they could see through all of that so trust me when I tell you He's not worth your time. And you, girlfriend, you need to be a whole lot more smarter and wiser than that. And wake the fuck up. Because trust me when I tell you, it ain't going to get no better. As long as you allow it, it's going to continue. So, choose wisely. It's either him, yourself, insanity, or your kids. Which one you going to choose? So, this one right here. OMG. Hi, April. My name is Destiny for the video. I've been watching your channel for a while and now, and I must say you are beautiful, and I always look forward to your videos and what you have to say. But well, thank you so much, Destiny, for the lovely compliment. You should see me when I wake up in the morning, girl. I don't look like this. Um, I always look forward to your videos and what you have to say. Anyways, I need some insight on my current situation, and it might be kind of lengthy. That's fine. We like lengthy. Last year, I met a guy named James at college. He eventually became my boyfriend. He's two years older than me. He's 22. He has no high school diploma, smokes weed, and, is a dr and his drug of choice is, is cocaine. No license, no car, no nothing. Most people look down on him because of the things, of these things, especially his peers and my family and my peers. But I always try to see the positive in everyone. Anyways, we've been together for almost a year now, and I'm starting to have overwhelming negative thoughts about our relationship. For one, I got a refund check from college and gave him $200 out of $500. He brought drugs and alcohol, but he did pay for the motel room. I didn't mind him inviting his friends over to the motel room, but all night and early in the morning, all he did was sit there at the table with his cousins, and friends smoking weed and snorting coke. I was appalled by the amount of drugs and the fact that I don't do them and I don't even drink. I didn't have a good time and we weren't even alone for the most part. That's what I was looking forward to. Another scenario, he always pressing me about having a baby but neither one of us is working but he wants to have a baby. I care for him so much and one day maybe have a baby when we are both working and have our own car, house, etc. 
So I don't know what's up with that. Plus, I think that he is father. Plus, I don't think he is father material. And most of all, he hates when I tell him about his drug use. He smokes and snorts almost every day, and I believe and I believe he does coke more. And I do call his drugs disgusting. It's the simple fact he finds time and money to do this, to to do his drugs, but he can't be productive. And by the way, he always be like, "Bay, I'm going to give you some money to get your hair did, etc." But never gives it to me. But when I come across very few coins, he wants mine. He always says it's our money. I'm not with him for money, but I can barely afford to even buy a $20 or even $30 wig. I like to look decent, and I only need a new one about every two months or so. But he can, but but, or so, but he can, but twenty dollars buy twenty dollars worth of coke almost every day, and forty dollars worth of weed. We often dis discuss we often discuss about getting married and having kids, but I get discouraged because it seems like he's just living in the moment. And on New Year's, he told me when we're going to make some moves this year. Wait, what? On New Year's, he told me we're going to make some moves this year, and he. And he's done nothing or anything positive or productive. As for myself, I'm in college and going back to school. In January, my family is poor and always has and always has been. He's spoiled and his family often gives him money because they have it to spare. And my family does not and never had it. He even gloated that everything is just given to him. His own mother is even tired of his behavior. I love this man. I truly do. I just want him to do better because I don't know how much of this I can take. Overall, he's an amazing person. He's truly nice, funny, and always there for me emotionally. I know me and him are young, but I want to build and have a future with him. But sometimes it seems like that's not going to happen. He isn't my first boyfriend, but he's a big upgrade for my ex, who I dated in my senior year of high school, who was emotionally abusive, suicidal mean, and bashed me on social networks. Anyway, what should I do, April? And sorry that this is so lengthy. Um, what was her name? Let's see. Okay, Destiny. So, yeah, that was a little, that was a little lengthy. I, I mean, yeah, it was. But it's a little stupid as well. So Destiny has been with this guy for almost a year. What the fuck is she thinking? Like he snorts coke and he fucking smokes weed and he drinks and he ain't got no job. He ain't got no car. Basically, she drank, she dating a crackhead. All right. Um, yeah, she's basically she's dating a fucking crackhead. Um, here's the thing. Why the fuck are you even writing me some dumb shit like that? Like, on some real shit? What the fuck? You in college and you dating a crackhead? He ain't got no car. He ain't got no job. He ain't productive. He got a coke problem and a weed problem. And he probably drinks alcohol. And then you giving him some of your refund check. And he going and buying drugs with it and going to the hotel. you like, oh, I wanted to spend some time with him. Are you stuck on fucking stupid but you said he's an upgrade from your last boyfriend? I can only imagine what your last boyfriend is because this one right here is a fucking straight up loser. Like, he's a straight up loser. But I guess if it's, if it's, is it the new trending thing to date crackheads nowadays? Like, seriously, like, I'm gonna go out and get me a fucking crackhead boyfriend that ain't got shit and let him use me up for the shit that I got. What the fuck? And then you guys are talking about babies? And you said he, you don't, you don't think he's father material? He's nothing. He's not even work material. The nigga can't even get off his ass and stop sniffing coke up his fucking nose and blowing the fucking blunt all day. And you're going to say you don't think he's, no bitch, he's not father material. He's not even friendship material or boyfriend material. His ass is rehab material. Take your fucking dumb ass and bring him to fucking rehab and then move on with your life. You in college, you giving him your refund check. 
you fucking the crackhead and he's using you and you probably don't even see this and you're talking about people are judging him and talking about him his peers why the fuck wouldn't they because if you were my friend you dumbass i would fucking talk to you the same way and tell you about your loser ass boyfriend destiny is it your destiny to fucking just jump off a cliff because it seems like you're jumping off the cliff right now with this dumb ass dude is it your destiny to fucking just be miserable with a loser he's a crackhead okay he might not smoke crack but he sniffs coke and he smokes weed he's non-productive he is a waste of bone and skin like damn desperate times comes for desperate measures i get it however there is other men out there in the world you don't have to go fishing in the pool of pond scum okay what are you into charity work? If you're into charity work and helping people get on their feet and trying to help them realize that this is life and you can get out the struggle, then go to a fucking shelter and help those homeless people. But in the meantime and between time, leave this fucking crackhead and ex, this boyfriend of yours alone because he's a case that needs a lot of charity work. And I don't think you have the times and the means on your hands to fucking deal with him. Now, you're talking about he's better than the last boyfriend. Sweetheart, you need to choose wisely because it seems like if he's better than your last boyfriend, you you really don't need to know how you don't know how to choose men maybe you should fucking have somebody choose them for you because if he's better than your last boyfriend you said he was an upgrade from your last boyfriend who was physical and mental abusive you don't think that this crackhead motherfucker who snuffs coke and fucking smokes weed all day is not physically and mental abusive i'm pretty sure i guarantee you that he said some old fuckery shit to you either when he was high or he wasn't high because he wanted to get high you cannot sit here and tell me or email me and tell me that this dumb motherfucker never told you or said no fuckery bullshit to you he has already because he told you when you get when he gets some money he gonna get your hair did but he don't do he don't do nothing for you he don't get your hair did okay you can barely afford a thirty dollar wig okay but this motherfucker could afford to get powder, smoke powder up his nose, sniff powder up his nose every day, and smoke weed every day. Now, here's the thing. $40 in weed a day? Oh, my God. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I smoke, all right? And I will buy me a $50 bag. And that'll last me like a week and a half because I'm not a fucking weed head. But I do make sure that I get my shit done at night. I don't smoke weed all day. That's just not cool. Um, I like to go to sleep, so it helps me. That's my excuse. Okay. However, if you got $40 to waste a day on some fucking weed and $20 to waste a day on some coke, that's $60 a fucking day. To some people, that's their pay. That's the day of pay for them. But we got a crackhead motherfucker who will find the means and how-tos of getting money. But he can't even give you no money to go buy a decent fucking wig. Or get your hair fucking done. But you gonna write me this email and ask me what the fuck you should do. And you love him? Well, it's obviously known and seen, a known fact that you love him and not yourself because had you loved yourself enough you wouldn't be sticking around for this fucking pond scum who sniffs coke uses your refund check if i was your mother or one of your friends girl i would hit you in the back of the head with one of the fucking college textbooks just to knock some fucking sense into you for giving him your fucking refund check so he can go get a hotel room so him and his buddies could get high while you sit there and look stupid. And you don't even use drugs or fucking drink. And you're with this guy? Okay, yeah, opposites do attract. But bitch, wake the fuck up. Opposites are not that opposite that attract. You're saying there is an old saying, birds of a feather flock together. However, you're not nowhere on his feather fucking level. You don't have a fucking feather at all, bitch. Wake the fuck up and fly the fuck away from the motherfucker. He's not worth your time. Like, on some real shit. I can't even believe that she wrote me that shit. Like, the the email that she sent me, she should have read it before she clicked send. Because had she read it before she sent it to me, she would have realized 
how fucking idiotic her email sounded. Now, I'm not dissing you, Destiny. I'm not trying to put you down. When I say how idiotic your email sound, meaning you would have known better and you would have read that yourself and be like, oh my God, I can't believe myself. Let me wake up and fucking move on with my life and continue with my career in college and find me a man that deserves me and who's worthy of me. Not this fucking pond scum crackhead who ain't worth shit. All he's going to do is bring you the fuck down. He's going to use you like he is. He's using you for everything that you have and everything he can get out of you. And as long as you continue to stay, honey, it's not going to get any better. He's going to probably end up being a meth head or a crackhead or something in that nature. And it's not cool. You have, like, your head on your shoulders. You don't drink. You don't do drugs. Why be bothered with someone like that? He's not worth it. Of course, people are going to judge him, your family and your peers, because they expect more from you. They expect more out of you. And the person that they want to see you with, they expect that person to be respectable and a human being, not a crackhead. Not a crackhead. I'm sorry. But Destiny, it is your fucking destiny to get away from him. Okay, you're having negative vibes and you're talking about having a baby with him. Girl, please, okay, if I was your mother, I would tie your uterus up and fucking yank it out, all right? I would fucking wrap that shit around my hand and yank it the fuck out if you would think about having a baby. Why would you even discuss marriage or having a baby with him? You are setting yourself up for problems. You don't need a baby with him. You don't even need a baby at all. You're in college. These young girls always want to talk about having a baby, having a baby, having a baby, having a baby. Okay, babies are beautiful. They're fucking cute. However, they're really cute when you can give them the fuck back and send them on their way. All right? And that's just how I feel. Yes, I have a grandson and I watch him when my daughter goes to work. And I love him to death. Two pieces. I take him with me wherever I go. I buy him shit all day, every day because it's my grandson. And... At the end of the day, I'm glad I could send him home because he's not mine and I don't have to be bothered with him. And it's not always cool to just be, uh, I don't know, the right words. However, young people think that having babies makes a relationship better and because we're having a baby, we're going to be closer. No, fuck no, you're not, you're not, you're not. You are not going to be closer because you have a baby together. If you have bullshit going on before the baby, it's going to get worse, okay? It's going to be more bullshit with the baby. So don't think that a baby is going to trap a man or make a man change and to be a man and be something that you want him to be because he's not. He's not going to change. He's still going to be an asshole and he's still going to be a fuck up, okay? So get the baby thing or the baby thoughts out of your mind because babies, babies, children deserve two parents that are both fucking sane okay you may not have to be together as a unity as a family but at least he got a father over here that's worth something and a mother over here that's worth something and we're both combined together something special and the kid doesn't have to worry about one of their parents going into fucking a crackhead rehab or an alcoholic center or anything like that or the mother dropping out of school because she's so busy dealing with the crackhead boyfriend who doesn't have his fucking mind together and she's busy helping him up and get off his feet and taking him here and there and he's used her up for all his money and she can't even buy textbooks because she's giving her his refund checks and she's spending on him and now who even knows you're drinking now because you're so stressed out about this guy and he's peer pressuring you into smoking weed and fucking doing coke and then you fuck up your life and you fuck up school because you're with this motherfucker that's how it happens okay destiny so wake the fuck up and get on with your life and stop dating losers all right stop dating losers because like you said if he's but he's an upgrade bitch i can only imagine what a downgrade is to you so on that note destiny Get it together, divas and divos. Let them know what you think about their situations. What the hell should they do? Because Rainy and Destiny, I don't know, maybe they should be friends together and talk amongst each other and help each other out and grow with one another. I'm not really sure. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is they both need a fucking real wide awakening. Seriously. Like, it's one thing to cheat, but I'm not about to date a fucking crackhead. I'm just not. So on that note, all the information for whatever will be in the video or the description box posted below. I'm going to go make me another drink because this was so damn good. I freaking love it. I love it. Yeah. 
and Rainy and Destiny, I wish you guys the best. I seriously do. Because my real talks are real talks. And though I may come hard and strong at you guys, this is just me. This is my real talk. This is me, how I am. I don't really sugarcoat too much. My daughter always says that I'm very, I, I have no filter. I'm very blunt with people and I have no filter. And my, my fiance says the same thing. A lot of people say that about me, that I don't have any filter. I'm too blunt. And, you know, I've been trying to work on that a lot lately. Um, but it just, it is what it is. Okay. So when you hear me calling you bitch and call, going off on you, it's not because I'm trying to disrespect you like the two assholes that you're with. It's because I need you to wake up and realize that life is short. And whether you want to take a gamble with life or not, you put your life in someone else's hands. And you see how they twist and turn it. Because they don't really give a fuck about you. Your life should be in your own hands. And you should give a fuck about yourself. Stop worrying about other people and get your shit together. You have to love yourself before you love anyone. And for me, from these two emails that I've read today, it seems like the, these women don't really love themselves enough. And I really feel like they do. Because had they loved themselves a little bit more, they wouldn't be settling for less. And I'm the first to tell you that. Because I've been there and done that. And I've been with somebody for over 16, 17 years. And in the beginning, it was great. Peaches and cream. However, it ended up like a fiasco. But I did love myself enough to finally get out of it. Okay? So that is my message to you guys today. Life is short. Love yourselves. Think of yourselves before you think of anyone. And not think of yourself as in a selfish manner, but think of yourselves as healthiness, love, serenity. And when you can get peace in yourself, then you can have peace within a relationship and you won't end up with no fucking jackasses. So on that note, stay diva and divalicious, and I'll see you guys soon on my next video.